Welcome to this video on defensive programming. My name's Andy Wicks, and in this video, we're going to look at how you can create your code in such a way that it's crash free. And that has to be a good thing. But before we get into that, I need to explain about a previous piece of work. We created a text file class. This class, uh, which lived in class txt file, Dot .py did all the file handling, text file handling, the reading, the writing, and appending. This class appeared to work and provided the results expected. However, as you'll see in a moment, it does have some significant problems. Let me show you. Here we have the code from the previous exercise in which we looked at the class text file. As you can see, I've imported it but I've added an old at the end. This is so that it doesn't get confused about what is the old file and the new one that we're going to be creating today. I've imported the text file class as TF. And if I run this code, you'll see that it works. So there is the text file read exactly as it's supposed to be read. No problems there at all. Now I have a second version of this code. Here, all I've done is taken the path and the file name out as separate items and put them here at the top to make things a little clearer. If I run this, again, it will work just fine. Here we have the file being read again. But, and there's a significant but, for this piece of code to work, it assumes that your file structure is exactly the same as mine. And there's no reason to suppose that it would be. Supposing if instead of using the D drive, you used the C drive. Well, what would happen? If I run this code now, you can see it gives me an error. It gives me a file not found error. And that isn't something that I would want to happen. The code works if I'm using exactly the right things, but if I get something slightly out, then the program falls over. And that's bad programming. So can we do anything about that? Well, the good news is, yes, we can. We can improve the text file class. We don't want our program to fall over if it can't find the file. It makes us look bad. It's unprofessional. You need something called a try, except, finally construct in Python. Others use try, catch, and there are other variations as well in other languages. But the basic principle is that you try something. If it hits a problem, it does whatever is in the except. And the finally is done if the try works. This will try a command, but it won't fall over if there's an error in the code. So we're not talking about programming bugs where you've got the code wrong. We're talking much more about what happens if the environment around that code changes. If your program hits a problem it sees, and it sees you have an except for that error, and you can have as many accepts as you like, it just runs whatever code you tell it after that. You'll see this working in just a moment. So how can we improve the text file? If it finds an accept for that error, then it does the code under that accept. The last accept, with nothing after it at all, is just a catch-all category. If you haven't handled that specific error, then the code under this bare except is run. This means that your program will never fall over. What you need is a full list of exceptions. And you'll be pleased to know that in the code that runs alongside this video, a full list of exceptions has been included. So we need a method that allows us to display an error message. This is not part of their error handling system. I'm just showing you this because you'll see this particular function being called later. What we're doing is we're using tkinter as a way of getting a message box. So this particular method called mb 
takes two parameters, the title of the message box and the text to be displayed. It then does its thing and shows the error message box. There's nothing clever here. Again, the code is in the code attached to this video. But now we come on to the more interesting part. What we want is a list that has the details from the text file in it. So we set up a list and that's what will be returned. Now we're going to try something. So we're going to have that with open construct that we've used before. And if everything works out fine, it reads the file and returns the list of lines that have come in from the text file. However, if the file wasn't found, well, then we need to do something else. So we have an except file not found error. If the file wasn't found, this piece of code, these two lines here, will get run. So what it will say is go to that method mb, use the title file not found, and tell me which file wasn't found. It then returns list, but list, you'll notice, is empty. So we can test when we get back to the particular piece of code calling this, whether list has anything in it. If it doesn't, we know that there was an error. I've also included an except, but this except doesn't have an error after it. In other words, if the try creates an error, but that error is not the file not found error, it will now run this piece of code. So error, unknown error occurred, sorry. And again, it returns the empty list. So our program is consistent. It will always return a list, but if the reading of the file worked, that list will have the contents of that text file in it. We can now apply this logic to write file and append file methods in the text file class. The new version of class text file can just be copied onto your project straight away. That's one of the many advantages of object-oriented programming. Now let me show you that working. Here we have exactly the same code as we had in the previous example. But notice I've left the C colon in. Well, that is an error, surely. So when I run it, what we get is a message box saying, file not found, couldn't find the file. And if you can read that, it does say C colon and the, all the rest. And in this way, our code does not fall over. Look, there are no error messages. When I click OK, it says, Processors finished with exit code zero. In other words, it's quite happy. The program hasn't caused a bug. Now that has to be a far better way of programming.